Perfect. Um, yeah. And uh, joining me now here in the studio is uh, Valley Samansky. Did I say that right? You did. Oh, good. <laughs> One time you tell me what it is, and two minutes later I'll forget totally what it's about. But I'm glad I got that. Sally, tell us, uh, you are with the Ovarian Cancer Symptom Awareness Organization, also known as OXA, right? Yes. Is that how you pronounce the acronym? And uh, you spent uh, over a year now working on a documentary on ovarian cancer and early detection. Uh, a story of the Northwoods community making a difference. And this is going to premiere on September 14th at the Park Center in Hayward. So let's go back a little bit and give us some history about yourself and how you got uh, connected with the Ovarian Cancer Symptom Awareness Organization. Thank you, Mark. I am one of the co-founders. Um, my other two co-founders is with me, Susan Wilman. Now, uh, from Chicago, they were the owner operators of the signature room at the 95th oh, on okay. Michigan Avenue. And at the time, I worked for United Airlines, and then we did a lot of our top events at the signature room. Okay. And the three of us got to be really good friends because we loved our dogs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the tide that we worked yeah. on. Rick and I worked on a lot of projects together. Um, they always gave back to the community. They had a series of the month program. So when Susan was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, phase three, mm -hmm. her dog detected it. Oh, actually. okay. And we decided we had to, had to do something. And so the three of us co-founded the Ovarian Cancer Symptom Awareness Organization. And we reached out to her doctor, Dr. Julian Chen, who at the time was the head of the gynecological division at Prentice Women's Hospital mm -hmm. and asked, told him what we wanted to do. And he said, what you need to do is get the word out. It's a silent killer um, to um, uh, women, their families, and also the medical community. So sure. we started gathering our, our friends and folks and just uh, came up with a 501c3 through uh, working very hard with um, the attorney from the signature room. And we, uh, once we established our 501c3, we established our mission. Um, we had a lot of collaborators who helped us. And we were an all-volunteer organization. Yeah. Um, we were formed in 2010, April 17th, 2010. So. Okay. Yeah. And again, really, it was just to help get the word out that yes. this organization is. And what the documentary is about is just talking about all the different things that ovarian cancer as a silent um, as a silent killer in yeah. most cases, how that's happening. And you talked about the dog connection there. You also worked with uh, the Penn Vet Working Dog Center. Yes. And uh, and how they're training their dogs to um, sniff this out. And yes. t tell us a bit about that process and how that works. Well, they it's, it's now in clinical trials. But yeah. what they... Um, Dr. Cindy Otto is the executive director at the Penn Vet Working Dog Center. And she uh, was at Ground Zero 9-11 with her search and rescue dogs and wanted to establish Penn Vet Working Dog Center and to train dogs in all kinds of um, different careers, uh, police dogs, medical detection dogs. And she was able to get a grant from the Kaleidoscope of Hope, an ovarian cancer group out of New Jersey, oh. to fund the beginning of the training of dogs uh, sniffing out the odorants in ovarian cancer on a scent well, hmm. scent wheel. Scent wheel, yeah. And so we, for eight eight years, under we first sponsored a dog by the name of Olin, one of her uh, dogs, but he kind of washed out on the uh, dog scent program. He was a more of a PR kind of guy. Okay. So wonderful dog. He came, they <laughs> came out to visit us on one of our dog walks. I have our t-shirt on yeah. that we, we used to have, but um, it's the scent wheel and the dogs. Um, there are samples from women with ovarian cancer, um, plat, blood, blood and plasma, and the dogs identify the odorants and they take that data and they shared it with Monel Kimbick chemical company who wanted to uh, create a, 
electronic nose that would sniff out that uh, cell oh, line. Okay. So it's not, it's not going to the doctor's office and having uh, right. a dog, but right. it, it's but now it's uh, for eight or nine years uh, they um, studied the what the dogs were telling them. The dogs were a hundred percent accurate, ninety nine percent accurate. Yeah. Wow. So now it's gone actually to the next levels. Dr. Otto also tested it with pancreatic cancer. Um, and uh, also during the COVID pandemic, she did some studies on identifying the, what the cause of, you know, the smells associated with COVID. So, sure. Uh, so she's our hero. And we um, raised money for eight years for an intern, a veterinary student intern to support her work. Yeah. So, yeah. So all of this is part of this documentary that you've put together. Um, how did this start? How did the, the conversation of putting this documentary start and, and who was involved in this? Well, two years ago, the writer director, Lucia Morrow, who is a three time ovarian cancer survivor, mm. came to Hayward. Um, we showed her film one year later, which is the story of moving on after you survive cancer. Okay. And so we hosted her for three days. She fell in love with Hayward. Um, we had the opportunity of introducing her to people all around Cable, Hayward. Um, and we saw a, lo a lot of different, um, we went to uh, uh, different locations in Hayward that I, you know, that represented all the different people who live here. Sure. And so, um, and she was here two days, three days. When she left, she said, I have an idea. I want to do a documentary about the people I've met in Hayward and the work that you're doing. Okay. She was absolutely enchanted with everybody here. Yeah. So um, that was the beginning. <laughs> yeah. And since then, there's been a lot of people. You've given me a huge list of all the people that have been involved in this project, not just on the production itself, yeah. but supporting the project and uh, being part of that. And I, we won't have time to go through the no, entire no, no, list, no, no. but, <laughs> but there's uh, at least 40 people from the area that yes. were a part of the production itself and in the video. Yes. Uh, tell us about some of those people that you had in, included in this documentary. Well, there's several people um, from all different walks of life. We have um, Deanna Person, um, Northwoods Humane Society and pancreatic cancer survivor. Mm. We have Sarah Balban, sculptor, um, beautiful work, breast cancer survivor. Uh, we also have Leanne Hansen, who is a 17-year ovarian cancer survivor. Mm. And we interview her and her daughter and, and the importance of finding out early the, uh, yeah. the symptoms and how important the mother-daughter relationship is. And we've also interviewed Amanita Akers, the Horowitz family. Um, a young um, man was a PTSD survivor and how they are involved in the community. Um, my, my good buddy, Gloria Sheehan from the Hayward Farmers Market, mm. we spent some time there. And just different folks, um, Dan McLaughlin talking about his mom, uh, yeah. Pat from Out of the Woods Winery, mm -hmm. and so many people. Uh, our board president, Carolyn Asher, her husband, David Asher, dentist. Um, just so many aspects of the North Woods, of people working together, and it, it's been just really refreshing to um, see everybody who uh, really cares. And, and it's about, you know, we interviewed Denise Marquardt, um, a stroke survivor, um, Inter international log rolling champion yeah and how it and actually it's our call to action is you take care of your pet your pet takes care of you you need to take care of yourself but the film sure. itself is about how people survive you know it's not just about ovarian cancer but it's about health in general about yeah. paying attention to yourself and not forgetting you that was one of the things that was so so important to my co-founder susan roman um was women spend a lot of time um, taking care of others and not taking care of themselves. Right. And yeah. so she wanted to make sure that take care of yourself because you have all these other people to take care of. So, yeah. and it comes through in the film. So it's, um, it's very heartwarming. And I, I was able to share the, the, excuse me, the final cut with my co-founder, Rick Roman. I guess Susan had passed away about 12 years ago. 
Okay. But uh, he was just so amazed at the warmth of the community of Hayward, how mm -hmm. they embraced what we were trying to do. Yeah. And you know, we interviewed Christy Mackey, and she talked about the sort of the spirit of the Berkey, of, you know, the Berkey activities, you know, so uh, it in, invigorates your health when you're right. out, you know, doing the, the 50, Two mile right track <laughs> <laughs> or shorter mile. or shorter or shorter, shorter. <laughs> yeah and that's what our our but board the point president is, is to be done. active exactly and, yeah. exactly but it was everybody just the, the same spirit and it was the spirit of you know, Stacey Hessel talking about her son was you know the northern nerd who's there also you. in the film talking about he was a volunteer for the Berkey and he finally decided to do the Berkey and we filmed him and so. It's, you know, just a, it's the spirit of Hayward and the people who live here, which is so enchanting. Yeah. And we were able to catch, capture that pretty well, I yeah. think. Now, you said it took 18 months yes. in total to do this production? Yes. Wow. Yes. That's that's a long period yes. of time. Yeah. And many seasons. You many know. <laughs> seasons. And beautiful seasons. Yeah. And um, Lucio was able to interview David Bissonnette and learn much about, you know, the the some of the traditions of the Ojibwa here which yeah. was intersected with sort of an introduction through Sarah Baldwin and her work with uh, the Ojibwa. So it, you know, it's, it's all encompassing and it's, it's, we're all very proud that we're, we did it and that it's over and we're going to premiere it and share it with the community. Right. Yeah. So the premiere date is going to be Thursday, September 14th. Uh, at 5.30, and it's going to be at the Park Center. Yes. Let's talk about uh, did the premiere itself, but then uh, the list of activities that are happening. We have a concert coming up. Now, we had, uh, I have interviewed uh, Yoko. Uh, how do you pronounce her last Yoko name? Yoko Nogue. Nogue. Yes. And uh, had an interview with her, boy, well, that was. Memorial Day week. Was it? Or, that? Yeah, okay. That's when she was here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, very, very interesting uh, young lady, so there's going to be a jazz and a blues uh, type of music from Yoko, and then uh, John Sonamel and the Big Fish Band. Yes, uh, concert starting at five thirty. Talk a little bit how these people got involved. Well, when Yoko came to Hayward in um, May, I had worked with Amanda Wilson at Deerfoot Lodge. Oh yeah, and uh, John Sonamel, of who of course mm -hmm. is in the documentary. And John, Jim Wilson, Big Fish, and Amanda and I and Yoko collaborated on Jazz on the Lake, which was just a fabulous concert yeah. in May. And everybody loved it. And they worked together to put the stage together. People came out. Um, Yoko was just an incredible, as John says, incredible band leader. Yeah. And so much fun. So they'll be uh, starting out the event. At as you said, 5.30 to 6.15. Then we'll go into the documentary mm -hmm. um, for, an, it's a, it's about 70 minutes. Okay. Kelly, Kelly Weiscarver, our, um, found, one of our founding OXA board members, will be the MC. Okay. At the Park Center along, uh, also at the barbecue wrap party next door at the Veterans Community Center. Oh, okay. And we are partnering with the Sons of the American Legion post-218 on that event. So we'll watch the documentary and then we'll all proceed over to the veterans community center and mm. we'll have that's where we'll introduce the cast members and have a little social time sure yeah and one of our founding supporters and a very um, wonderful man he and his wife dr roger marr and his wife marilyn will be coming here from saint charles he's the past president of the american veterinary medical association Okay. And also the former CEO of the One Health Commission. And he really validated our our partnership with with the veterinary community to get the word out, to work with Dr. Otto, because it's the One Health conversation that interconnects medical, veterinary, dental, all of the environment coming together for, for good health. Yeah. So he's going to say a few words over at the Veterans Center, along with Tim Connor. Um, who from the uh, American Legion, a uh, sense mm -hmm. of the American Legion, who will talk about the cemetery 
you know, and all the work that they've done because they're in the, the documentary as well. We interviewed some veterans. Oh, too. okay. And there's some beautiful drone shots of the cemetery. And, yeah. Oh, you know, um, there's just a lot of people that we've talked to. Christine Righeimer, who is, uh, um, has MS and she, uh, has survived and, and thrived because of her relationship with her horses and how she oh, rides with them. Yeah. So it's like, we'll all be there. So we yeah. want everybody in the community to come join us. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a celebration. That is a, a, a big, a big event and, uh, not so long of an evening. It's, uh, no. but, uh, It'll have uh, again music, the premiere of the of the documentary, and then some uh, refreshments afterwards. And uh, yes. there's some donations accepted for the barbecue wrap party as well. Let's talk a little bit about ovarian cancer itself and early detection. Is um, why is this so important? Because if I suppose if it's not detected early enough, someone could be progressively yes. so far down the line yes. with the cancer that yes. it's fatal at that point. Yes. So that's the reason. Well, there are, you know, our, in our, the messaging that we get out, and this is our dog that he was yeah. our spokes dog. Uh, what we try to share with everybody are the silent symptoms, which are bloating, uh, pelvic or abdominal pain, feeling full quickly, urinary problems, um, call to action. If you have any of these, see your doctor if you have a family history uh, oh. even more important on your mother's side and your father's side okay so it can be passed down from father to daughter to to daughter so oh, okay. so that's and we we share that as much as we can and when we were at the farmer's market we had uh, a poster and also at the muskie festival a poster about the importance of uh, how it can be passed down from the father to the daughter. So, mm -hmm. and it's just, you know, paying attention. If you have a family history, pay it to these early warning signs, or if you're not feeling good in general, you know, you, you know, what's, you know, there's something wrong when you don't feel good. Right. Our yeah. message is don't ignore it with right. ovarian cancer or anything else. Mm -hmm. it, it's, and does, I'm assuming this is very treatable if it's detected early enough. 90% survival if, if um, treated early. Yeah. There are 33 different kinds of ovarian cancer. Oh, okay. uh, And all different stages. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, it, it is treatable, but it's it's paying, paying attention and, and making sure that um, your doctor listens to you. And if your doctor's not listening to you, seek out another medical doctor who will. Yeah. Right. And that was something very from our uh, Dr. Schink, who's on our board. That was one of his main things. It's just if your doctor's not listening to you, find somebody who will. Sure. So. Yeah. Um, what's the website that people can get more information uh, about? Well, this? we've shortened it and made it easier to get to. It's www.teamoxa.org. Oh, okay. That will take you right to the documentary, but it'll also you'll be able to access all of the other information on our website. At the yeah. Website. Okay. And so um, the, I'm sorry. So this website, the shorter website that you said is the documentary on that site or yeah. it is. Uh, there's oh. a trailer. There's all oh, the trailer for yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. I w yeah. didn't think you released it online yet. No, 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 at this no, point. no, no, but no. Um, cause we want everybody to show up on September 14th. We do. We yeah. Do. And we also, when you go to that Team Oxa, we also have a tribute wall that we've been able to pay tribute to oh. many members of the Hayward community and, and in the Illinois community too, who we've loved and lost. So, mm -hmm. and it's been, you know, it's very meaningful uh, to everybody to be able to share and yeah. share that. So, wow. Well, this has been just, uh, again, a long period of time for you to put, put this all together and, and work with this team of people. Um, when's your next film coming out? Oh, I don't know. I think I'm going to take a break. <laughs> Spend yeah. some time with my mouths and my cats. <laughs> oh, well. Um, so once again, uh, Valley, give us the, the detailed information about the premiere coming up. Okay. It will be at the park center on a Thursday, September 14th. Uh, the theater opens at four 30. 
The concert with Yoko, John, and Big Fish um, will be from 5.30 to 6.15. They'll need a couple minutes to move the musical equipment off the sure. stage. Everybody can get a refreshment. And then the documentary starts at about 6.30 and goes for an hour, uh, 70 minutes. And then we're going to have a procession of people who will lead everybody, yeah. led by the uh, post uh, the American Legion Post 218 with an honor guard over. Oh, to veterans. okay. So we're pretty excited about just the the community aspect of all of us getting together in different venues. So yeah. And then we'll have the the wrap party from 7:45 to nine o'clock. Okay. And we'll have um, we're working with Lynn's um, and they'll Lins be meets, the barbecue. Yeah. Yep. The, bar, the the sons of the American Legions are smoking the smork butt pork butt yeah. and we'll have barbecue pork <laughs> and other offerings and and just some music and it'll be a lovely lovely time very so good. i hope everybody will join us yeah oh very cool well valley thank you for coming in and and sharing thank this you. with us and i'm glad we were able to share it with our listening audience thank you. and uh hopefully we get a few people to stop by and and support the the program i sure hope so i, yeah. I it'll Bring some Kleenex because it's it's a beautiful, uplifting, yeah. and inspiring yeah. film. Very good. Well, thank you for stopping by today. Appreciate okay, thank it. Thank you, Mark. All right.